Our body can give clues to what we're thinking or feeling and review if what we're saying is the truth or deception. Today's guest is Tracy Brown. Time Magazine has named Tracy one of the nation's top deception detection experts. She's trained alongside our country's top law enforcement, and Miss Brown is a frequent television guest and the author of How to Detect Lies, Fraud, and Identity Theft. Her fraud-spotting learning platform has helped companies stop millions in fraud loss. I'm your host, Chris Parker, and this is the Easy Prey Podcast. Tracy, thank you so much for coming on the Easy Prey Podcast today. Oh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you. That's so kind of you. Um, Can you tell me about how you got to be where you're at? Oh, boy. Well, I'll tell you the, how about the medium long version? I I, uh, grew up uh, racing bikes and um, you probably know uh, some of of the people that I've trained with. There's this one guy named Lance Mm -hmm. and um, he was really fast (laughs) and uh, him and his buddies would show up to our training rides and I would jump in the men's races from time to time. I, I grew up down in Dallas and, um, we were on the same bike shop team and it was in trying to keep up with him that, uh, I learned that, um, he was really fast and <laughs> I, uh, I wasn't. And so I, I, um, I, I learned really that, that cycling is, is for small people and I'm a big person. And so I had to use all of my wits that I possibly could to try to outsmart my competition, understand what they were going to do next. And I would keep record. I, I would watch people and I would keep records on each individual person about, about their habits and their tells. Cause we all run in, in patterns. We just mm-hmm. run patterns patterns all the time. And if you can decode that, you can understand what's going uh, to happen next and what is likely on their mind. And um, over time, I got really good at that. And that's uh, that's the intel that landed me on the U.S. national team. And I started to do well there. And I won some national championships. And, and um, when I got uh, done with cycling, I, uh, I got into hypnosis and neurolinguistics and I started seeing clients and I started to understand them on a different level, but it was the same tools that I was using. And so I was able to seem like I was reading people's mind. Now, um, I wasn't, I was just reading their body language and understanding what was, what was going on. Now, um, I, for a long time, I, I spoke on persuasion and influence and in body language and in the words that, that you can use to really start to guide and direct someone's mind. And then something happened. I was, I was looking for a more profitable way to use my knowledge. Mm-hmm. And I happened to call my brother and he said, oh, I got uh, these these um, hackers are at it again. They uh, they stole all, all my info in the government hack that happened. And this has been probably five or six years ago now. And he goes, they're going into payday loan stores, impersonating me. Uh-huh. And um, they're taking three hundred dollars and then disappearing. But all I have to do is sign an affidavit that it's not me. And I said, wait, 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 wait. So I go, people are like in person using your info and it's a hundred percent loss to the company plus admin fees. And he said, yeah. And I went, ding, I got it. Cause I didn't know how much fraud happened in person. And so I, uh, I, I call myself the fraud busting body language expert. And, and I had all the Intel. I just didn't know how to how to apply it to a very expensive problem. And, uh, cause I, I ended up, you know, I've, I, I've trained with the FBI and the police and sitting next to, to green berets and people who probably couldn't tell me they're in the CIA, uh, to study, you know, um, law enforcement interrogation in, in deception detection training. And so I bring that into the, the business world. Most of what I do is keynote speaking, um, which is a little different now than it than it was earlier this year, and so uh, a lot of virtual presentations these days. But I think we'll be getting back to um, to live events. I don't know. Hopefully, middle knock on wood, middle end of next year, maybe if we're lucky. So, so that that's been my progression. It's just been following uh, following the path that uh, isn't always so obvious, and um, and making the most out of it. I think this is really exciting because you you have kind of the off uh, offline and analog 
to what I see a lot of the online. It's the you know the 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 scammers, the fake dating sites, the people calling all these off or all these online. I'll call them online cyber and tech, and you're dealing with all the in person, all the physical tells versus the the wording tells, the grammar tells from the oh, spam it's, emails. It's true. And and you do need to, to, to really protect yourself. You need to know about both because most fraud happens. If, if you talk to people, it's not big, sexy, mysterious cyber fraud. It is right in front of your eyes, hidden in plain sight. Um, and, and it comes in all different forms. Um, and, and it could be something small from, hey, you know, you ask someone, hey, um, how you doing today? And they go, fine, doing fine, right? <laughs> Shaking their head, no. And and you got to believe the body first. It can go all the way from that to, hey, do you know what happened to the petty cash? To, uh, do you know what happened to that stack of banded hundreds that was in the vault, right? Those, those kinds of things um, are what I'm able to help uh, decode. But, but also, um, there, there's a ton of different uses for it, right? Like, did you know that 40% of people lie in a job interview or on their resume in a material way? Oh, that's scary. And, and 2% of HR pros can figure it out, right? Ooh, so, wow. so I, you know, hiring um, someone and say, oh, man, I don't have someone in, in this position. That's expensive. Hiring the wrong person is way more expensive and in being able to tell who's lying is is um is important in be able being able to find the right person but wh what else uh I, I work with a lot of salespeople a lot of salespeople because buyers are liars mm -hmm. yeah i've and, heard that expression yeah if you can start to understand their true um motivations, their true uh, objections, then you're going to be able to work work with that instead of being in the dark about what someone's really thinking and then wondering why they, they never call you back, yeah. right? So, so there's a lot of different applications. It's not all fraud, but it is all deception. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and, and it's, it's fascinating. It is absolutely fascinating. So now I have to ask you because you talk about body language and being – and reading people – are you a world renowned poker player? I am not. I can't tell I, I can't tell a spade from a club. I really can't. Um, but I have worked with World Series of Poker guys. Gotcha. I, I have I have worked with people who ha, uh, gamble up at the casinos in um uh, Black Hawk and Central City up here. I'm in Colorado. And everybody has tells. Yeah. The thing about poker is that um you know, we turn on the TV and it's like, oh, it's an hour on Saturday noon on ESPN 8, right? <laughs> and and uh, what we don't realize is that it's actually four or five days, oh. like straight days of a of a tournament. And, you know, you see the guys and they have their hoodies pulled tight and their sunglasses on and they think that they're hiding something, but they're not. You can actually feel what other people are feeling if you match their body language. And... Um, from from head to toe. If you do what they do, you will feel what they are feeling and be able to start to decode that. So it takes a little bit of practice, mm -hmm. but uh, but yeah, you can you can do that. And I've had guys in the tournament who've done very very well. Oh, that's cool. Well, that's not something that I think our audience. Well, actually, that's probably something our audience would love to figure out how to do. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> <laughs> but we can learn. We can. We, they can. They can leave that for a personal consultation with you if they like. Absolutely. <laughs> So in terms of like fraud happening in businesses, petty cash, what are kind of some of the warning signs or the body languages that people should be looking out for that indicate deception, that indicate that something's – that someone's lying? Got it. So there's no one tell that says someone is lying. And and that's that's the rub here. Right? There, there's there's no, no like if they look up and to the left that it's a lie and if oh down to the right gosh, it's the that, truth. That drives me crazy. So the first thing when you see those eye pattern charts that are out there and, and a lot of people have them in NLP book in books and sales books and things like that. First thing I tell my clients to do is go to that book, open it up to that page, tear it out, wad it up and throw it away. The accuracy of that is really low. Okay. What 
is important is um, is people's baseline behavior. So you look for a significant shift in baseline behavior. That's the number one thing our law enforcement looks for. Everyone, like I said, they run in patterns. And when that pattern shifts, often it will, when pressed on a question uh, that's potentially incriminating, uh, what happens is our mind goes into cognitive overload. So it's doing too many things that it wouldn't normally do body language falls off the plate. Okay, so what's your mind doing? Well, it's remembering the story. It's making up more story. It's understanding how you're being received. Are are you uh, are they buying it or are they not? And uh, you have to add emotions and you have to add time. Like all these things happen. Mm-hmm. And so body language goes a little bit haywire. And knowing some of those signs is important. So you want to believe the body first, take the words with a grain of salt, always, right? So when there's a mismatch between the body language and the words, that's when you have a hot spot. And, mm-hmm. and generally you want three to five hot spots clustered in the, in the period of, let's say, a couple sentences so that that's a pretty good indicator if someone's pants are on fire. So what are some of those? Well, um, if, if for American people, we nod our head, this in, means in, yes, in affirmation. right? And you, yeah. and you shake your head and that means no. So if, if you, if you catch someone nodding their head saying, I would never do that. <laughs> you see how it doesn't match or shaking their head. No, you can ask me anything. Right. Or Bill Clinton did this to all of us, nodding his head just very gently. Yes, I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> like like right there in front of all of us. And so that's that's one for a direct yes or no question. That can be very, very telling. It could also show uncertainty. Like if if people do the uh, all, like a circle that says uncertainty, the same that um that shrugging your shoulders will say uncertainty as well. Like, like you don't believe what's coming out of your mouth. Um, other fun ones that are easy to look for is um, when people's lips disappear in over their teeth. Like they suck the yeah, just like that. They <laughs> they suck their lips in. It's been my experience, and I you know I've only been doing this twenty years. It's been my experience that the next thing that comes out of their mouth is somewhere between a half truth and a lie. OK. And so what's important because it is that you don't step on those opportunities that you've that you give yourself when you're asking yourself some questions. You've hit on something and they're holding back emotions. They're holding back information that you need. If you keep going in the conversation, you've lost it. You've lost it forever. And you need to stop and just ask people and, and give them a chance to say something. And, and the way you do that is that you say, seems like there's something else you want to say about that. And then stop talking. Shut your mouth. Because the he who talks first in this situation loses. Hmm. <laughs> and so if you are, if you can be comfortable being uncomfortable and making other people a little bit uncomfortable that's where you will win you will be shocked at what they say so a little bit of silence when you see some of these tells can really buy you a lot of information gotcha that that makes a lot of sense i want to ask a follow-up question in reference to the shift in baseline behavior Mm -hmm. are you referring to when you say baseline behavior is that individual's baseline behavior or to like a larger segment of, of the population. So like if I know Bob really well, I might be able to pick up on his body language is off. But if I'm if I don't know Bob, I don't know that his necessarily that that's not his normal body language. That's a great question. And, you know, it doesn't take very long to get a baseline behavior. This is why small talk is so important, because if you ask people questions that they have no reason to lie about, Okay, and this is actually how you pick out identity theft. If you ask them questions they have no reason to lie about, then you can see the shift when you ask them something more pressing. Okay, so what are what are questions that they wouldn't lie about? How many kids do you have? Mm -hmm. Uh, What street did you grow up on? Do you have a dog? What's your dog's name? Tell me about your wife, like things like that. They usually don't have any reason to lie about it. Now, here's the thing. If if you ask these questions and you don't see a shift in behavior when you ask questions like, Hey, what happened to the, um, to the petty cash in the safe? 
right? Then either they're lying about everything <laughs> or they're telling the truth, right? Then you've got and, to figure out which one is which. Exactly. And so most people will, when you ask those kinds of questions, unless they're sociopath, psychopath, like actually on the scale, they will revert back to something that's truthful because it's just easier cognitively mm -hmm. to to do. And, uh, you know, just in a regular conversation, uh, people aren't going to lie a whole lot. Now, now, some people can't help it. And they actually can't tell the difference between a truth and a lie. And, and, and some people uh, think it's more socially acceptable to lie. They lie for fun. That's a habit that they created probably for a survival technique around a stressful situation growing up, mm -hmm. uh, a, a continued stressful situation. So it could be abuse or who, who knows what. Um, or maybe they modeled um, – modeled someone doing that. So there's a lot of reasons why that happens, uh, but it's up to us to catch it so that you can protect yourself and really everything that, that you work for. Gotcha. So we, we talked a little bit about like, you know, in the workplace, you're the boss and you've got someone who you think maybe stole some money from you. But what if you kind of, I don't want to say flip it, that like your boss is approaching you, but you're just out in public interacting with someone that you haven't met before. Are there ways to tell if they're trying to deceive you? Well, okay. When you so, when you don't like have this, hey, did you steal the petty cash? Well, you're not a police investigator. This is just a random person you're having a conversation with. Okay, so so it depends on the gravity of the situation. All right. And yeah, you want to learn to watch people and raise your sensory acuity. It only takes a couple questions to get their baseline behavior. So um, let's say you're in a um, – uh, you're out to drinks with whenever we can go out to drinks again uh, with a vendor that you're looking at doing work with. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so can they really do the work that they're saying? And it, so with that, you got to you got to ask some pinpointed questions and make sure, again, that that you're looking because lie detection doesn't always come just in body language is actually a combination of body language, tone, and words. And so you want to look for slight shifts in, in those as well. So pacing, tone, uh, word choice, volume is, is a huge one. Uh, word error rate is one of the biggest indicators of deception. It can be higher than body language, actually on accuracy, because here's what happens is that um, our mind works in a, at about uh, 1,250 words a minute, give or take. Our mouths go at 150 words a minute. So if they're stuttering and stammering and just not being able to get the, the words out as fluently and eloquently as someone should be able to in a situation where, let's say, they're selling a high-dollar product, mm -hmm. uh, that's because they're going through four or five scenarios in their mind. And it doesn't come out the mouth cleanly, right? So, yeah. so different shifts like that, like because you do have to be careful who you're doing business with, because you can you can lose a lot of money that way signing up with the wrong person, right? Yeah. So, so those are just some of the tells, and and everyone is is unique, right? In that baseline, so it's mm -hmm. important to it's important to watch. So it's almost you have to build up. Uh, it's not like uh, I'm going to use a like it's not like uh, what do they call like. Uh, the magic trick where they cold read people. You really actually have to have – Yeah, you have to have some rapport. Some, some rapport, have had some interaction with them enough to figure out what's quote-unquote normal for this person. Absolutely. Be and because I can imagine some people, me, I tend to get nervous around people I don't know. What do they think mm -hmm. about me and all those things that go through your head. And so when you're talking about picking words or stuttering over words, I go like, well – Gee, I get that way when I get nervous around people. It's not that I'm lying or trying to present myself differently, but I want to think, oh, do they do they now think I'm lying because I can't get my words out? <laughs> well, right. So so people also can this is more advanced stuff, right? So people can have a nervous baseline as mm -hmm. well. So so you gotta understand when people are nervous versus when their nervous baseline shift, right? So do you see how it kind of it, it can get it can get pretty deep. And you know, in a in a casual conversation over over drinks, right? Um, you got to decide how bad you want to know. Yeah. Right. Cause it can get exhausting just, um, watching people all the time. And people ask me all the time, 
like, are you just worn out? And it's like, no, the question is, do I care? And are they paying me? Right. <laughs> and if they're paying me, all of a sudden I care. Right. <laughs> so, or, you know, it could be little things like uh, my husband, uh, he, okay. So my husband doesn't like rotisserie chicken, you know, at the grocery store that you mm-hmm. get, you walk by and it smells so good. And, and we were remodeling our kitchen a couple years ago. It was like eight o'clock at night. We went to the store trying to find something to eat. We didn't have, like, I didn't have anything. I had like a hot plate, right? The fr- like a 1980s hot plate is what I had. And, and I looked at him, we're in, in the store. I'm like, Matt, do you just want to get some of this chicken? And he looks at me and he shakes his head. He shakes his head no. And he goes, yeah. And I'm like, okay, you, I know you. I know you just lied to me, like right there in the grocery store. I'm like, you know this, and you just lied to me. And so you can, like, let's find something else. And we looked on the top of that little, I don't know, setup they have there, and they happen to have, I'd never seen this before, a turkey breast in the little bag that they had kind of rotisseded up, I guess. And uh, and so, you know, you can make someone's day better. <laughs> by just understanding a little bit about deception, right? Like, like right there. So um, a lot of different ways to use it, a lot of different levels of importance Mm -hmm. in your life. And and sometimes it's, it's really good to know more than what you actually use. Right. So, so when, when you let little things kind of go and then you kind of add them up over time and, and look back it, it can become very clear mm-hmm. uh, exactly what their intent was, what they're trying to tell you. And, and I think that can be even more important in a longer term relationship to so go, wait a minute, that didn't quite add up. Right. So, so I always say this in, in my, in my keynotes, cause that's mostly what I do is uh, corporate keynotes for financial service groups is um, you pay attention or you pay with pain. Yeah. Right. And, and, and we put all this attention into our computers and, uh, you know, making sure we have security cameras and locking the doors and things like that. But guess what? Uh, why you lock in one door your car and leaving the other four open? Mm-hmm. Right. So, so security is, is it takes full enrollment uh, from your, your, your senses at all times uh, to, to lock those other doors. It's funny. It, it makes me think of I, back when I had a corporate job, um, I dealt with the uh, the building management. And I remember getting an email from them at one point saying, hey, we've had this rash of uh, people who don't work in offices walking into people's offices, phone in hand. They walk through the office like they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. They walk by some woman's desk where the purse is sitting there. They just very quickly just grab the purse and just slowly walk out the door. And like nobody, no one in the office ever remembers the person ever came through because their body language was so much of the, I look like I belong here. Oh yeah. Yeah. They owned it. It's called social engineering. And that's a whole other thing that, um, well, because on, on my podcast, I have a podcast, it's called Fraud Busting, and I interview some of the world's most notorious criminals, right? And and they started talking to me about social engineering. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is this? And and um, it is persuasion and influence for bad purposes is what it is. And it turns out, because I've been speaking a long time before I really started to focus on lie detection, and what I would talk about is persuasion and influence, strategic body language and words for deep unconscious persuasion, which is social engineering. Yep. <laughs> and they they picked it up because they, that's how they run their business, right? And and maybe they had to, like as a survival mechanism, a lot of them have uh, like abusive uh, backgrounds and, and things like that. So they had to really understand who was around them for their own safety and what was going to happen next. But guess what? They transferred it into um, into their business to do no good with it, right? To, yeah. to, and so what I do is is teach people, okay, this is what the bad guys are doing. Let's teach you how to use it for good and how you can see this coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and so that gets to be pretty pretty interesting as as well. So it's much more than just deception. It's um, it's very strategic for a deep unconscious persuasion. So that kind of kind of leads me to the question: Is there so if you have like intelligence communities, mm-hmm. and then there's also counterintelligence, is there such a thing as kind of like counter body language where people will 
people who are familiar with body language reading who are up to no good will intentionally do things to you either hide, hide their tells or to show wrong tells? Or is that just really, really hard to do? That is really hard to do. Okay, so case in point, uh, the uh, presidential debates are coming up. They're September 29th. And w- most times what the candidates will do is uh, they'll sequester themselves for a while and practice their responses. Now they get asked questions and then they just start talking about whatever they want to talk about. Right. (laughs) But every now and then one of them will throw the other one off. Okay. And those are the times you got to wait for because body language, you can't rub it out. Right. It's, it's a lot harder to see in rehearsed answers. Mm -hmm. Okay. It'll leak out somewhere generally, uh, mostly in the feet. We don't often get to see the feet in, in debates. Sometimes we do, um, but not a lot. Uh, so with, the more you rehearse it, the more you can rub, uh, rub the signs out. But mm-hmm. the key is uh, what, with the debates or with whoever is that uh, the answer's on the spot and there's a certain element of surprise. And then th- it, it's just like the card, the deck of cards just starts to fall and, and you can start to see that unravel. And that's when it gets really fascinating. So, um, so something to look for uh, in the in the um, in the election cycle here coming up because there should be three debates, mm-hmm. um, and y- if you can stand to watch all the all the lies, I mean, do it. Watch with the volume down, and then you'll be able to really get the truth. Maybe that will be the the the, the way for me to watch the debates is to to try to see if I can see shifts in people's body languages and see oh, yeah. like oh okay. Then rewind and play with the volume back on. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's a huge way to do it. And what we want to watch for in the debates is I think we'll see contempt quite a bit. And Mm -hmm. and that's really typical for candidates. And contempt is defined as moral superiority, right? So they're doing because they have these high morals. And you see that with with a, a crooked smile, Right. And uh, like, a, yeah, like that, mm-hmm. like an asymmetrical smile. Um, and what else will we see in the debate? We'll see anger. We'll see um, we'll see out and out uh, deception when one throws the other off script because they both have their spin. Right. Yeah. And it's like sort of the truth. It, what they tell is a bunch of half truths is, is what they do. Um, so, yeah. So that's going to be fun to watch. And the best way to do to do is watch without the volume. Mm hmm. So I so I guess even if we're not watching like presidential debates where people have done tremendous amounts of of rehearsing, I know ha- having done a, a public speaking course, we're taught to do uh, they call them bits where you have little mm-hmm. stories and and I've seen this as starting to interview people like I can see when someone goes into a, a well rehearsed story. Sure. Yeah. In that there's a there's a tonality change or something like that. Are there other ways to kind of spot when someone's gone into a rehearsed story versus like, oh, yeah, I'm just telling you about something that happened yesterday, but it's rehearsed? And then, then the follow-up question is, is the fact that it's rehearsed an indicator that it might be deception? Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, people rehearse sales scripts all the time. Yeah. They, they do. And you can tell when they drop into them because – it's just they, their pacing changes just a little bit. They don't have the pauses that they had. Maybe, uh, maybe they'll use different words, and and so that those are pretty easy to listen for when you do that. And uh, the follow up question was, wait, what was the follow up on that? Um, how to know when they've gone off? Oh, gosh, what was it? So we talked about whether how oh, to when, tell someone was rehearsed was a lie. Yes, that's, when the rehearsal is a lie. Mm-hmm. So the Okay, so we have the it's going to leak out somewhere generally unless someone is on the sociopath psychopath scale, which I think we see in politics on <laughs> like like or they're knocking on the door. Okay, well, let's we, we, we probably see it more often than we'd like to see. We do, we do, but we see it, right? And so the um the key there is that it's going to leak out somewhere usually and and i'm talking like 10 percent of people or so maybe a little more than that are can be on the scale okay Mm -hmm. and we have the least control over our feet 
So watch the feet when you see running in place, like as you stand behind a podium or in front of a TV camera and you see people start to, uh, well, run in place, Mm -hmm. right? With their feet. That's the unconscious mind saying, this is dangerous. We got to get out of here. It's the, we got to go. The the, the amygdala amygdala flight Mm -hmm. uh, mechanism is tripping. Yep. Yep. And then their conscious mind goes, no, we got to stay. Right. So you see running in place and you see that all the time. We saw it with Tom Brady and deflate gate. Uh, we saw it with uh, Chris Watts, who uh, killed his family out here uh, a couple of years ago in um, in Colorado. And, and those are just some of the videos that I've looked at. But it's real consistent. And, you know, you don't think much of it, but it's all the things that you don't think much of that that can get you. Right. And, and it's it's like. um Alternative facts, like that's what it is. It's the facts woven into the to the truth. Those are the most expensive ones, and and so that's why, like again, paying attention or paying with pain. Mm-hmm. That's 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 the scary option is paying with pay, pl- paying with pain. I can say that. Yeah, it's it's a tongue twister, but um, but it's it's the truth, right? So so what is the pain? Oh, I know. Uh, losing losing everything you work for. Mm -hmm. Right. Because someone takes advantage, uh, not making the sale, um, you know, not getting the date you want. Right. There's all sorts of pain and it's different in every business. And it boils down to time, money and just and just brain drain of of hassles. So is is there like one thing that people should be doing? I think there was the the pause, you know, that, Mm -hmm. that we need to pause and let the person speak. Are there other what's kind of the the number one thing that you would tell people to watch out for when they're dealing with someone to identify fraud, deception, well, kind of that one <laughs> takeaway, if, if if there is one. I mean, there obviously, I don't think there's any clear cut. Well, any time right. that you see the person look up into the left, well, you know, run mm-hmm. away. Right. So again, those are patterns, right? The eye patterns. That's a, and that'll shift. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it is is to be a little more on the down low. No more than is immediately obvious. Use it when the time is right. Okay. Because if it's because the whole idea here is information recovery. Okay. So make people comfortable enough around you that they'll talk. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you say, you know what? That's a lie. Some, some people need to hear that. It is very few <laughs> that, 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 that need to hear that. They're going to shut up. And they're not going to say anymore so that you're not going to be able to find those incongruencies. So just just know more than is immediately obvious and, and just kind of file it away, file it away until it comes time to use it. And I think, you know, if, if you're watching things and you're listening for those incongruencies, that's going to pay off big for you because you've used your awareness to to protect yourself and, mm-hmm. and find that information that's that's really been hidden up to now. I like that of kind of doing a little bit of research in advance mm-hmm. and, and know, knowing more than the other person thinks you know about them. Oh, absolutely. And one of the things that I do that I can help people with is um, I have a way I can look at people's uh, dating profiles or LinkedIn profiles and understand what um, what motivates them, what they're pro- how they're probably going to think and and uh, how they go when they get stressed, like what happens when they get stressed. And because, um, you know, uh, dating fraud is is huge. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I've been able to um, help a lot of friends do that. So I'm always happy to take a look at, at, uh, at, at pictures really quick one. And, and I know we're bumping up on time here, but one friend of mine, I would do this for her. And I'm like, no, this guy, he's going to have a lot of anger. And, and this guy, you know, he's, it, it's, you're not going to want him for one reason or another. And then she shows me this picture. And I was like, look, do not have any contact with this guy. I go, he is going to, he is a huge problem. And sure enough, what happened? Another friend of ours was like, oh, just go out with him. He turned out to be a stalker. Oh, he was stalking her. And I'm like, look, I told you this. This is my job. This is what I do. And then you ain't going to listen. I go, you know what? You deserve to get stalked. If that's how you're going to be, right? And and so anyway, she listens now. And, <laughs> and we bet. found a great guy. We found her a great guy online. So um, so there, there's a lot that can be revealed even from from people's pictures with, with their general motivations and their and their habits and um. Uh, you know, because people are going to put up the best picture that they mm-hmm. 
have that's going to most truly represent themselves. And I'm like, great, game on, let's do it. Right. So, so yeah, I, I like to be people's little, little secret weapon. And, and so far I'm batting a thousand. I like it. Oh, that's awesome. Is it easier to detect good, uh, you know, truths or is it easier to detect lies? When you're looking what at like I, what stuff I like look that. for, what I look for is the absence of of lies. Okay, does that make sense? Yes. So I so I kind of back into it. If I'm like, wow, I don't see any signs of deception. Like someone sent me a video the other day, because um, because I get my, I have like I don't know fans, I guess, or just people who've been in my audience that they're on my newsletter and they'll send me things, and uh, they sent me the video of Paris Hilton who did an interview about this documentary that she's in that details the abuse at some uh, I don't know reform home school thing that she did when she was young. And I looked at it and she's telling the truth uh -huh. it, it, because she's congruent. Like I didn't see any deception there and, and people were, were just curious, like what, and, and so that's, that's, that's what you look for. That's what I look for is the, the absence of deception. And generally that gets gotcha. you the truth. The I suppose there can be some caveats there, but generally that's, that's where, where it'll go. It's, it's a more of a soft science. So there's always going to be caveats to any of these things. I assume. It is. There's an art and there's a science. And, um, you know, body language, I, I work with a lot of investigators. Um, a lot of really big business deals will bring me in and under disguise and put me as part of their team and, and things like that. And um, it, there's an art and a science to it. It is not body language is not admissible in court. Mm -hmm. Neither is polygraph. And so my job is to tell investigators where to dig and where to look. I'm like, there's something here. You can find it. I don't know what it is, but this situation is not, uh, it's not the truth. Right. And, and sure enough, it, it turns out that way. So, um, so that's, that gets to be kind of fun, you know, and when the stakes are high, like it's important and I feel a responsibility to, um, to do my best, to, but, but still, you know, the best, the best interrogators, you know, the best body language experts, we're what 80, 80%, 80 is really good. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so far so good. I've, I'm doing great, you know, but there'll, there'll be the times when I get stumped, but that's when I, um, I have a team that I can outsource to if I need to of a federal agents that'll, that'll help me out. So, um, you know, I, I try to stack the decks in my favor. That's a good way to think of it. Now I, I was curious cause we talked a little bit, uh, about, uh, sociopaths and psychopaths. Hmm. Is there an easy way, like, and that when they lie to them, it's, it's, I, I've, I don't want to get into the psychology, but there's this right. perception that when they lie, they don't think it's a lie. And so therefore they don't have the same body language tells that maybe other people would. Is That's there a way to, to like almost say, like, okay, well, there's no tells, there's enough non, there's enough tells there there's enough absence of tells to indicate that maybe this person is a sociopath or a psychopath um you know kind of a a lack of response to things that should trip them up or should get them to behave a certain way and they just don't yeah well okay so the the reason that 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 comes about is cuz they can't tell the difference between what's going on externally and internally and um, I'm not the best expert at at that. I can tell you that 80 percent of people in the correctional system is our sociopath psychopath. And that's that's how the misbehavior comes about. Mm -hmm. um, as far as detecting that, I don't have a good clue I, uh, um, to tell everyone. Uh, but they're. Um, their body language, you know, tone and words, the tools that you have, they're not going to be the same as for regular people. And at some point you're going to know everything that, that they say is a lie. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so that's when that's your number one clue. Cause you're going to, you're going to just know if you've been around them and you're in, in certain situations that they're, they have that tendency. And so, uh, you almost got to stay a step ahead of them. And those are the people that you can say, I know you are lying. Right. And and they're they're not going to respond to that even usually. Right. They're just they're not going to have a good response to that because they don't. They're not working on the same plane. The rest of us are. Yeah, there's there's definitely some people that I've run across that I would think I think that they've 
they're sociopath or psychopath. I don't know. I understand the nuances mm-hmm. between the difference of them where like I know a factual thing that they, you know, they said this did happen or it didn't happen when I know it absolutely did. It's not one of those. Well, it's just depending on how you look at it. Maybe it did or didn't happen. And like they talked about it or didn't talk about it and didn't even skip a beat. And I was like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Normally when, Normally, when someone is doing something that's a fairly obvious lie, there's some body language tells, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there are. And so you got to listen to yourself on that. Like, here's here's the thing. The reason I started um, my podcast and it's looking like like I'm going to do some Hollywood stuff around it is that looking back the signs were all there. Like people tell me these crazy fraud stories all the time, but they always knew something wasn't quite right. They couldn't put their finger on it. And so it's those things. Like when you get that feeling that like something's not adding up here, like something's just a little off. That's what you got to pay attention to because that's, that's where big losses can, can happen Mm -hmm. is, is in that, that little bit of doubt that, that, that creeps in. Right. And with a little bit of training, sometimes you can put your finger on it. A lot of times you can, but it's those little bitty things that add up and looking back, they're like, you know what? I knew that one, right. Hmm. I knew it wasn't like quite what it needed to be. And, um, you can find things that way. Very interesting. So if people want to find out more about you and your podcast, where do they go? Oh, yeah. So my podcast is just about anywhere you can get podcasts. It's called Fraud Busting. And um, you can find me at bodylanguagetrainer.com. And you'll see all kinds of videos from my keynotes. And, you know, whenever I can help people out, um, that's that's really what I like to do. And, you know, we, I've, I've helped stop some pretty big losses. I think the biggest one was um, $22 million uh, wow. fraud loss that we stopped. Yeah. So that's, that, that's worth my keynote fee. Yeah, like, absolutely. Right <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, so really, you're an insurance policy. I think so. I, I think I, I, that that's that's how I look at it. I mean, if if you look at ROI, like I haven't done the math on that, but that's like a, bil- a billion percent. Like, um, <laughs> 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 you know? that's a really good ROI. I like that. I like I that. Do. I, I have ROI. Not a lot of keynote speakers can claim real ROI, but I can. <laughs> Tracy, thank you so much for coming on today. I super appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Easy Prey Podcast. If you like this episode, help support the podcast and our mission by leaving a review at easyprey.com slash review. Notes and a transcript of this episode with Tracy Brown can be found at easyprey.com slash 42.